Hey everybody, Grandmaster Ben Feingold here, continuing our series on the Slav. In this video, I want to talk about the A6 Slav. Someday I'll learn how to pronounce the Chelyabinsk variation, or I might be leaving out a syllable. And that's black playing e A6. This is a more recent development in the Slav, pretty popular. And I'd say in the last 20 years, it's played quite often. However, before 1990, I don't think I've ever seen the move. And it's sort of a waiting move. So if white does nothing, then black, I mean, white has to move, but black wants to take, whoa. Black wants to take and then play b5 and be up a pawn because black's already played a6, so there's a lot of defense of the b5 pawn. So um, I've actually had white in this position. Uh, I don't think I've ever had black. I don't think so. Um, I play the Slav a lot, but I don't play a6. And I've played c5, I've played e3, and I've played a4, and I've taken on d5. Those are the four main moves. Um, and they all lead to a different kind of position. And basically, I'm playing a4 now because I won a really nice game with a4 and actually lost the game with e3. So. Um, it's not because of the moves in the opening. It's just uh, psychological. So let me, I want to show you a4 first because we're just saying, well, if you want to play b5, you can't. And for example, after, let's say, takes, for example, um, and then I play e4, you, you, you can't play b5. I mean, you can play b5, but you're not, you're not holding on to your material you can't take with the A pawn because your rook is attacked. So you have to take with the C pawn. And then I play E5 or knight takes B5. E5 is better. Knight D5 is the most logical move. And then I can take on B5 because this is pinned. I mean, black's not down material here, but this pawn's attacked. These pawns are both isolated. I have two pawns in the center. White has a big advantage here. White's advantage is so good that the engine wants to take the knight and sacrifice the exchange just to improve the pawn structure. Okay, so taking on c4 really isn't considered a good move. Okay, so I want to show you a game that I played where I had a really good result. And in this position, uh, black can play bishop f5, e6, or g6. Those would be the most common moves at the grandmaster level. And... I had a game that went e6. This is about 10, 11 years ago. I think it was 11 years ago. Now I think it's 12 years ago, now that I'm thinking of it. Uh, e6, bishop g5. And what's funny about this exact position, which I'm showing you, is this is the Cambridge Springs with the insertion of the moves a4, a6. Otherwise, it's exactly the Cambridge Springs. Now, in the Cambridge Springs position where the A pawns haven't moved, I always play knight to d2, but the most common move is to take on d5 in this position, which is also the most common move in the regular um, Cambridge Springs, although I don't play that. Anyway, I took because I prepared for this game, and most people took this way, e takes. And yeah, probably white slightly better. But my opponent played knight takes. And this is actually a very theoretical position if our A pawns haven't moved. And very few people played knight takes, whereas in the Cambridge Springs, everybody plays knight takes. So I sat here for a few minutes and said, what's the difference? And then I found the difference. So I played e4, which I want to play, and he won a pawn, which is a mistake. And in this position... He played a very bad move. Queen takes c3 check. I guess he didn't know the line. I didn't either. Knight f6 is a really strong move. And the reason is after queen takes, I can play bishop d2. And I did. And the reason this is better for white than the regular Cambridge Springs, where the pawns haven't moved, is black can play queen a3 if my pawn's on a2. But now he cannot. So this is bad for black. Now, the reason knight f6 is good is if I play the really obvious move, bishop d3, now when he checks, I can't play bishop to d2 because my bishop's hanging. So I have to play something like king e2 or king f1. 
And this is good compensation for White. White has all his minor pieces out. White has a beautiful center. And Black's making a lot of queen moves. So that's theoretically about equal, but I'd probably take White. Um, anyway, after it takes Bishop D2, my opponent played Queen B2 because he has to. And I didn't want my opponent's queen running away so much. So I attacked his queen and he went here. And then I played a5, and I thought this would strangle his queen side for a long time. If he moves his bishop off of c8 ever, I can take this. And if he moves his b-pawn, I can take or take on Pisson or something. So if th none of these things can move, I thought that would be good. And now my opponent made the losing, losing move. He's barely losing here, barely. Some would say he's not losing. After the next move, he's losing, losing. He didn't like that I had the center and the development and the open file and strangulation. So he played c5 to destroy my center, which is an incredible blunder because I was playing a grandmaster. And that doesn't let him retreat his queen. So now I win by force. It's actually not easy to find. This would be a very difficult um, puzzle rush, puzzle battle, tactics trainer problem. Very tough. Um, but I played rook a1, his queen has to go to b2, because there's no other square. And then bishop c4 with the threat of rook a2. And the only defense to rook a2, which wins his queen, is to resign. If he doesn't resign, I'm going to play rook a2 and win his queen. So he resigned. So that was a nice easy win against somebody that was higher rated than me. And that was a slow game, but he moved his queen too much. So that's why... Uh, personally, in the a6 variation, I like to move a4 just because I won that game so easily. And if you have the black pieces and play a6, which is fine, make sure you know a4, c5, e3, and c takes d5. Once you know those four moves, you're all set. And if you have the white pieces, you just pick one, you study it a lot, and that's the one that you're going to play. This is Grandmaster Ben Feingold with our Slav video series. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you later. Bye.